All right, let me see if I can do this video in the shortest amount of time and give a product review for bars leak radiator repair and also for using a UV responsive light to detect leaks. All right, 2000 Saturn SL2, 195,000 miles. Got it relatively inexpensively. And as I've worked on it, like a lot of things, I've uncovered multiple problems. One of the problems that I had is I went to replace this tube here, which goes to the expansion tank and comes over and was on a nipple here. And when I went to replace this tubing, because there was clearly a leak here, uh, it didn't show up till about 60 miles of driving it. <clears throat> I was losing fluid and the um, low uh, coolant sensor came on. So it finally came on dozens of miles after the test drive. So 30, 40 miles of a test drive, it didn't come on because the person had repaired it down here. Uh, there's a heater tube. It's part of the ABS manifold. That's this piece here. And a common problem is uh, these generation two Saturns, um, they leaked through this. And I was able to invent basically following up on someone else's video, kind of invent a different way to repair this heater tube and also to repair this broken nipple that uh, might have been broken before, might not have been broken, I'm not sure, but there was definitely a leak here and it was so small and so difficult to find because when the engine got hot, there was no residue. So it was very hard to find that leak. Once I found it, I have a whole separate video, um, ABS repair, no manifold removal, it's on YouTube. In any case, I thought that would take care of the leak. It didn't. And when I bought the vehicle, I did see that there was bars leak in there. It was the copper colored bars leak. So I flushed this multiple times, maybe five times of just water flush, one time of a chemical flush, because I thought, well, why should I have all this stuff in here if this isn't leaking anymore? Well, all of a sudden what started happening is the radiator started leaking. And I wasn't able to figure out where the leak was because all that was left was some residue uh, down at the bottom, which once in a while would, would indicate, yeah, there's definitely a leak, but where is it coming from? Well, it turns out that it's this aluminum, which clamps to the plastic, okay? So you have, uh, this is the shroud that goes over the fan. So to repair this, you have to take off, to get a new radiator on, you have to take off this, you have to take off this, disconnecting some stuff here. You take off this box. Um, there's some bolts down there and pretty much you can get the sh fan shroud out and the fan out. And then you're left with the radiator and you unbolt the radiator. If you have an automatic transmission, there's some cooler lines here. Those cooler lines are from transmission fluid going into your radiator. So that gets cooled off. So you have to take those off. And basically you take off this upper radiator hose down here is a lower radiator hose, okay? You take that off and uh, you replace the radiator. These radiators, uh, you're looking at anywhere from 45 to $110 online and probably a couple hours of repair. Not too difficult. Some cars, quite a bit difficult, quite expensive. And in this case, not so much. Uh, these Saturns are relatively easy to work on. Okay, so that vehicle over there is also a vehicle of mine. It's a 2005 Sienna with only 100,000 miles on it. And those go to like 300,000 miles. So this is a manual transmission. And as you can see, this is a UV light. And you see the reaction that the UV uh, chemical, it's like a one ounce chemical you pour in here, you get these glasses. I did not find these glasses helpful at all. Um, however, this light definitely was very helpful. So as you can see, by using the light on the coolant, uh, the brightness of the yellow shows up quite a bit. So you can see here, it was leaking from before. I saw UV responsive liquid all the way up here, and now I'm not seeing any of that. And I could see on the inside, this area, uh, you can see where it's, kind of put together here uh, you can kind of see 
there's a little bit of some responsiveness to the light a little bit of yellow in there not a lot but a tiny little bit it was draining all the way down here and this is about all the fluid that was leaking but you can see how the uv reacts to the light so this has been very helpful so my feedback on the uv liquid very helpful however here what you see is very much there's a leak and the leak is mostly when the car is running and then it's spraying back here so you can see where it's leaking down the radiator okay you can't really tell exactly where it's coming from but you can definitely tell it's leaking okay so what we're seeing is there's evidence of a leak where it is is clearly where the uh, the metal of this radiator connects with the plastic and is clamped together here and it's coming down that right there it's not coming out of the nozzle nothing over here is broken i don't think the plastic it's simply the clamp between this and this and leaving only a tiny amount of fluid this is from yesterday so this is all that's dropped on the ground since yesterday pretty darn hard to find without that uv light so i wasn't having any success finding the leak now how much is it leaking in a 20 some odd mile trip you can see how much is in there it went from about that black line to the top of the black line to the bottom of the black line in 20 miles that's not a lot of leaking um now to be clear it was leaking once i fixed this and once i flushed the system about five times with just water after flushing it once with a chemical to clean the entire radiator system it started leaking worse and worse and worse to the point where it was leaking from the, this line here to the bottom of the tank in a 25 or 30 mile range because I flushed out all the bars leak that was in there previously. So here's my feedback. First of all, this UV stuff clearly is very helpful. The light, extremely helpful. The glasses, not helpful at all, in my opinion. Using these glasses, I was not able to see any of that uh, light up in any specific way. But with this light, I certainly was. The bars leak definitely has helped. Why? Because after I flushed the system five times and I got out all this old bars leak, it started leaking from say here to here in 20 miles from here to there in 20 miles and then after the fifth flush all the way to the bottom of the tank in 20 miles so this stuff was working and i flushed it out wanting to find out where is it leaking i wanted to know exactly where it was leaking and i wanted to fix it because this is a patch this is not a repair this is a patch it's like putting a patch on your bike tire inner tube and then that patch falls off later and exposes the leak um again just looking at this there was uv responsive liquid down at the bottom coming from here and as the car was moving that stuff was blowing all over so i couldn't tell if it was coming out of the water pump I couldn't tell if it was spraying out of that lower radiator hose. I couldn't tell if there was a leak here somewhere from a crack. I couldn't tell where it was. And now I've definitely isolated it. The metal clamping to the plastic is giving way. And this stuff is definitely fixing it. However, the proper fix is to replace the radiator, which is not that hard to do on this car. So if you need to use this stuff, one thing you might want to be aware of is if you rely on this to patch a leak and then later on you're thinking you're going to go a thousand miles and not have to repair the radiator what happens if it starts to leak again and then you end up putting new coolant in there is it might expose the previous leaks and the new leak and then you might end up stranded so i would kind of say 
Think of this stuff as a patch. Think of it as a short-term repair. And a thousand miles is definitely short-term. So if you're selling the vehicle, if you're trying to trade it into CarMax or whatever it's called, uh, you're just trying to pass on the problem to somebody else, definitely it works. If it's so expensive that you can't afford to fix it because of certain cars, the radiators coming off could cost you 1500 bucks to repair. Uh, this definitely will get you along the way. What I was concerned about is what is this stuff? Is it good for the car or bad for the car? Is all this stuff floating around in the coolant system damaging or destroying anything while it's flowing around? Um, so I don't mind plugging up the leak, which definitely it's done. It's gone from leaking all the way up here to the bottom of the tank to leaking from the top of this line to the bottom of this line in about 40 miles of driving. And the UV has helped me find the leak, but the proper fix is to replace the radiator, flush out the system, try and get rid of this bars leak and this UV inhibitor and put in the proper ratio of coolant and not rely on this stuff because if I rely on this stuff, I could be driving somewhere and end up stranded, which means that I would have my dog or myself it could be 105 degrees outside or it could be snowing outside and then I'm stuck somewhere because I was relying on this. So if you rely on this stuff, you might want to have an extra bottle of it in your car just in case you start to lose fluid again. You're going to need to refresh it. That's one thing to think about. And the other thing to think about is how much does it cost to repair? Is the car worth repairing? Uh, budgeting out a proper repair and not considering this a mechanic in a bottle or an actual repair but just a patch so that's my feedback i hope that's been helpful you got anything to say hey you got anything to say about bars leaks what do you think huh no opinion apparently